Et enfin, à la table de Stuker, last but not least, le récent vainqueur du German Grand Master, l'anglais Karen Wilson. Les matchs seront arbitrés par messieurs Lacombe au carom, madame Bozilova, Bozilova pardon, au snooker et madame Tab au pool. Welcome. <laughs> and uh, it's Team Europe. For me, the, the dream team in this event against Team Asia. The dream team, why? Because Joshua Filler is playing nine ball. He's the current reigning world champion. Kyron Wilson has won a couple of tournaments this season on the Pro Tour in snooker, among which the German Masters, the Six Reds World Championship, and Frédéric Caudron, not the reigning world champion, not the number one, that's Dick Jaspers from the Netherlands, but still Caudron, one of the icons of three cushion. And they're up against Team Asia. Johan Chua is playing nine ball against Filler in only a race to five. The competition a short side. Donc, uh, Xu Xi, he's a 21 year old uh, pro from China who got to the semi final of the Indian Open. And Kwok Nguyen from Vietnam playing against Caudron. Really short, I'll explain it a little more. There's a 30 second shot clock, two extensions in three cushion, playing a race to 30. A best of five between Wilson and C. And a best of nine between Joshua Filler and Johan Chua. So Jasmine, in this event, if uh, if you were to play another discipline, what would it be? Oh, it would definitely be snooker. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, I've, I've tried Karen before, of course, uh, and I think it's very interesting, but just haven't played it enough, to be honest. And I love snooker. I also love it for practice, because now we've been playing Chinese eight ball mm -hmm. for a couple of years now, which is a snooker table in a pool size yeah. with pool balls. And that's, of course, a special discipline now. So you need to practice a little bit on a snooker table too sometimes. Yeah, yeah, just to, to make that clear, in uh, China, organizations have been trying to, or well, have developed this hybrid game. It's mm -hmm. a mix between pool and snooker. This is going to be an interesting match here. It's only raised to five, so every yeah. ball counts. And for, for the pool fans, we're not going to be able to show the whole match. We're going to show glimpses. But it could be over real quick. Filler, one of the quickest players on the globe. Joshua had a tough travel, though. He just told me that they cancelled the flight yesterday. He arrived today in the morning. Had no practice time yesterday, so... You know, there's different circumstances, I guess. But, I mean, he's a pro, so... Yeah, deal with it. Slide angle on the two. I had a few problems with the speed especially with because it's very slippery is like uh, the balls keep, uh, keep sliding out of the rail so uh, curious how he's gonna handle that but like most events that you participate in you have a sliding table um, to be honest, it's it's changing now. I think mm -hmm. the, the manufacturers are getting better and better to create a uh, better type of cloths that don't react, first of all, too much to the temperature and to the um, air conditioning. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, I think they're trying for the cloth to not to be too slippery, not to you know slide too much. So, uh, but I mean, you always, of course, new cloth, new balls. It's always going to yeah, slide a little bit, different. and we all know that. So, you and can, it's the same for everybody. You can try to simulate it. You probably simulate it in your academy. Exactly. For yourself, your brother, and other people. Mm -hmm. That's what some people sometimes forget that playing on a new table with new balls is different than playing on a used table with used balls. It's just changes the angle sometimes your position game yeah. you just need to be able to prepare on similar tables and deliver the cue a bit softer now filler as he does so often makes this game look ridiculously easy <laughs> you could tell there were like one or two positions where he was maybe a little out of line but it doesn't matter to him he has the skills to just finish it uh, just like he always does so So break and run by Filler. It's alternate break. And you need a bit of luck after the break to get a nice position on the one, if of course you, you make a ball on the break. Here, Xusi. 19 on the board, first opening chance. This could be over quick as well, this match. Oh, that was nice. I split. Having perfect position on the pink. Yeah, the black is tied up, so from his next red, he'll need to get back to the pink. Did you ever play that in, in Rangwald? They have that snooker tournament in January. It's on the 5th or the 6th. No, no, I never played, unfortunately. But then again, I'm one of those, I don't know, people that need to practice a while until I really enter a competition. Yeah, you, <laughs> can't, you can't allow yourself to just be in it for the fun of it. I guess. I guess I'm, I'm just too ambitious for that. I mean, I could just enter and just play for fun, right? But I'm, I guess I'm not that type of person. <laughs> I always need to feel prepared. <laughs> Especially when it comes to the strategy in the game. Mm -hmm. I mean, just making balls, okay, that's one thing. But about the safety and the strategy, that I guess that's very important. I was very much looking forward to seeing uh, Wilson in action. I do the commentary back home on snooker and Eurosport. So I see him all the time, but I really, you know, I want to pick his brain. Mm -hmm. Get a lot of information from him. One of the stars in the game. Works very that hard. Great. And he works together with the, the same coach for years on end now. Mm -hmm. Barry Stark, his name. So we like just got away wi with it a little bit here. Before the match, we spoke a bit. You know, I asked you about uh, practice and training, and what you're working on. Do you ever, have you ever in your career, now that we're watching the snooker players, like redesigned or restructured your pre shot routine? Oh, definitely. I mean, I'm not saying I, I basically stick to the to the technique I've been playing all my life, but you, you know, you you change different things you I mean of course when you're in the childhood you grow so you have to adapt it anyway but even now I can tell that when I've had a busy year I have to go back to the table work on my technique make sure everything is still in line mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you realize okay there's a problem here something has changed a little bit or um, for example you're looking more with your dominant eye all of a sudden and that creates a different angle that you're looking at the ball so uh, you're never done with it so I've always Keep, keep working on the pre-shot routine and over the years I have changed little things. Mm -hmm. Maybe you know, people who would, don't know me wouldn't see it, 
but my trainer would definitely see it. So. Of course, yeah. So it's just little things, but sometimes they mean the world to you. <laughs> it takes weeks and weeks for you to change that. It's a precision game. And I guess I, I feel like it's so incredibly important. I mean, I work with the youth national team in my academy and I keep telling them, listen, the basics are fundamental. I mean, you need to keep working on them all the time. It's not you learn it once and then you're done. You need to keep working on it and making sure everything is still in line. It's just so incredibly important in my point of view. Yeah, definitely. Now, with Wilson, Kyron Wilson, you can see very clearly was it what he does in every shot. 11. Snooker, it's even oh more yeah. important. You have to be more precise. I didn't think he wanted to draw that back a little further. Yeah, he also pocketed thick in the in the corner. Mm -hmm. Had it gone in the heart of the pocket, the cue ball would have been straighter on that red. Three. Can still hold it for the pink. It's a good shot. Can go on the pink now. Do you watch this back home? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, especially when you're in Europe and you turn on Eurosport. I mean, you can, you you can, can watch snooker all no, the time. It's always on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yesterday, if you might have missed it, Ronnie O'Sullivan won another title, and in the last frame, he made his uh, career century number thousand. Wow! That, yeah, well, that's yeah. I that's mean, picture it e perfect, isn't it? In the last hour, it even looked like he was saving it for the last <laughs> for the last frame. Well, and when you know him, he might have actually done. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he could be the person to do that. So. Two more open reds available after this. We'll have a 15 point lead after the black. Nine. This can split up now the other two reds. Yeah, I don't think he will actually. I'm always looking at them. Well, if he hits the high ball of the two. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is perfect. Uh, this was definitely perfect. Only by hitting real first, he had a chance to come out there with possible uh, position. So in November, you had this presentation uh, under the Eiffel Tower, mm -hmm. right? This mm -hmm. is when the campaign started. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Sean Murphy was there, mm -hmm. and I think uh, Jeremy Burry mm -hmm. from France, mm -hmm. yeah. It was, it was really special. I mean, when you tell people you've been giving a speech at the Eiffel Tower, that's definitely something unique. <laughs> so uh, that was an incredible experience. And it's, I also think it's really great to be together with the Karen players, with the snooker players. I mean, at the end of the day, we are one sport, even mm -hmm. though it's three disciplines, but uh, wow. I guess it can only help you know, working together and really supporting each other. I think this, this format would be the way to go for the Olympics. I would even think it nice if they think of a format where men and women wouldn't be up against each other, but they may be on the same team. I thought first it would be interesting to have like a pool team, a snooker team and a carom team. But maybe mixed. Yeah. Like I know, would like that. Maybe two two or three it would one make or whatever. Us the only discipline of all sports where where men and women join forces. Exactly. I think that would create a lot of uh, you know, interesting matches and I think it would be interesting for the viewers as well. Yeah. Twenty eight the difference, thirty five with the black. If he makes black and one red, then he'd have Sikh Su playing for snookers. Frame ball. I have to get you every time I see a snooker player in a polo shirt, <laughs> it, it takes getting used to. 
<laughs> that is actually true. I actually also laughed at the, or had a talk with Guy on Kim because she never wears a polo shirt either. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when I saw her, I'm like, okay, I got to take a picture of that. <laughs> Wilson didn't get into the cue ball enough. Don't think the red goes to the side pocket. Well, yep. Guess again. Nice, very nice. And I think it's great Wilson is here. It's an important stage in the in the season for the snooker players. One of the outside favorites for the upcoming world championship. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, when you stand at a snooker table looking at this ball that he just played, you pretty much think of, should I pr rather play a safety maybe yeah. <laughs> well, go for that pot? The, the frame is there, it's in the books. Yeah. But also the, the pockets are, a, a, you know, they, they look a bit gen generous, but still, yeah. So first frame in the books, in a race to three, opening score for Wilson. One C zero against Sixu. Yeah, that was impressive. That was quick. Seven. I don't think I even saw him practicing mm -hmm. before the match. Nice little oh, wow. beauty from Caudron. <laughs> this is this is I guess my issue with Karen when I play it that you know I, I think as I would play on a pool table. Yeah, and so uh, there's just certain ways and, and combinations that I would never come up with. I mean, it's just so that's why it's so much more difficult for me to play carom than it is in snooker. Yeah, it it takes time. It takes you know, yeah, absolutely. You need to study the game and and well, you can also not study the game, but then it's boring because mm -hmm. you find yourself playing the same routes over and mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is gonna be a two-two here. Time All Japan champion. Specialty is 10 ball. Taking Carlo Biado's place in this event, who didn't make it due to other responsibilities. I remember one of my lessons in Karam, and I was playing it, and uh, one of the trainers said, Come on, go into the corner. And I'm like, I'm a pool player. I don't want to well, go into the corner because <laughs> there is usually there, the pocket. There's a pocket, yeah. <laughs> you know, so that's how I learned it. I'm like, okay. And playing all that maximum English, that was very tough. Yeah, at that's, first. that's, you know, you want to get out of your comfort zone anytime you practice. Mm -hmm. Well, not anytime, but, you know, there are times to automate skills and there are times to learn new things. Mm -hmm. You can only learn if you go outside of the box. Exactly. But this is, I think, Im important to know for people because some might think, well, you're a pool player, so you might as well play carom. But it's not the case. You know, we all, it, it is still a different discipline, and you really need to learn the game, and it is different. It's just some people in Austria, they always ask me, it's like, do you play snooker? Do you play carom? I'm like, yeah, I mean, two. for practice sometimes, but yeah. I'm not an expert in these disciplines. No, 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 no. But but I do believe it, it, it would give you direct value for your nine ball game or ten ball game Absolutely. for your pool. Absolutely. I mean, I mean all the patterns in, in carom, I mean, they're incredible. If you know the patterns, the rails, that would definitely help in a pool game as well. So when wants to miss it long, if he were to miss it on the way in. One. Look at the position. player like him the next point almost impossible to miss so he can focus a little bit more on the subsequent position manipulating the red ball a little
little thick. It was trailing 9-2. Have you played a little carom? Carom, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I just missed cold the, <laughs> the, pre the previous shot, but <laughs> no, a, li a little bit. Okay. You know, on a good day, I'll make... No, I don't know what my average would be. No, and I've played a little. It's a big sport in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. the Royal Dutch Billiard Federation is Sweet. approximately 35,000 members. Wow. Oops. Of which uh, 32,000 are carom players. That's impressive. But actually more straight carom mm -hmm. on a small table than three cushion, but still okay. it's, it's big. Before, when I was a pro player, any time that I f wasn't feeling very motivated to practice pool, I'd play uh, snooker or three mm -hmm. cushion. Or actually for pool players, one reel is a better practice game than three cushion. Mm -hmm. little more unconventional, the technique of three cushion players. They aren't set up as uh, mechanical as uh, snooker or pool players. Doesn't want the red ball to land One. too deep. When Caudron plays, he plays so fast that we can't go wrong calling the shots because <laughs> <laughs> he goes too quick for us to make a call. Yeah, that was three. He's uh, probably, presumably, the strongest all around player over all disciplines. Kader, one reel. In the it's Netherlands. Easy, so natural. Yeah. A machine gun. Like in the, the Netherlands and uh, Belgium and France, they go through the ranks. So they, they start with diff different disciplines mm -hmm. and they'll grow and mature towards three cushion. Unlike, oh. for example, in uh, Korea where they just start out playing three cushion. Yeah, it's really big in South Korea. I mean, I've been there for a tournament once and we were trying to find a place to practice and we found so many carom tables, it was unreal. It was real in every corner. Bye. Probably no other country where any Q sport is as big, I as think. As big, exactly. I think that's the beauty in our sport. I mean, you have three categories, three disciplines, one sport, but in every country it's a little different. You have countries where snooker is huge, and then you have countries where carom is mm -hmm. huge, and then you have countries where pool is huge. I think that's great. We've got a little bit for everybody. <laughs> Everyone involved. Needs to go around the table, five rails. Maybe even sit. No, he doesn't play to go seven. Nice. Seven. Oh man, <laughs> he's <laughs> so good. <laughs> and that's the thing with me. I would need like five minutes to think of a pattern to play. Yeah, <laughs> it's he's, just uh, like, okay. he's on autopilot. Yeah. little bit too thin, but there was a bit of worry for the double kiss. Mm -hmm. But a nice run there, extending his lead, 18-12. Wilson in the meantime, 82 on the board. Now, what's important on the break in nine ball, Jasmine? 
Well, of course, it's really important now to make the corner ball, at least to make sure you stay on the table. Um, the one ball is going to go to the side pocket and going to make sure you place the cue ball in the center or towards the, the head string. It depends on how you break, really. Mm -hmm. But the important thing is that you try to have a shot afterwards. And I think he just made the corner ball here there, too, so that's very important. He played a little bit of a cut break. So he made sure the cue ball goes to the side into the long rail, comes out again. Um, when you rack like this, I prefer to stop the cue ball, not to play too much cut break. But that's everybody, you know, does it differently here a little bit. So he needs to avoid the two ball. Or when it's Run so difficult it. to avoid the ball, better go into the ball. Don't know if it will pass the red three ball. It's Looking over. at his face, I'm not sure he can pass it. Going to be tight, and the applause that you hear is for Tyron Wilson, who is on a fancy 107 run at the moment. Oh, wow. That was a nice combination here. Yeah. 2-3 two, two, combination. Ended up, I guess, almost perfect on the two again. Yeah. Can it's play a very likable guy, uh, Bob Witt. I don't know him well. I met him at the World Cup of Pool in London two years ago and here, and he's just, you know, sociable. Is it... Even all the fin Philippine players, I mean, when you look at them and when you look at how they play, it's like they've been born with a cue stick, you know? It's, it's so natural, it's so, they're all pretty much played the same way. It's like a national sport there, I guess. And it's, I like, I like the way they play it. It's, it's a, lot of, a lot of feeling in the balls, a lot of, uh, you know, nice technique shots, it's... And how's that, do you think? Hmm? How, how, how does that come about, that they, that they look the same or and that they look so natural? Well, it's, it's I mean, I, I've been asking them, actually, some players, some uh, women Philippine players, and they said, well, they, you know, they grow up to have the same, you know, under the basically same circumstances, starting in the same clubs with the same tables. So they have to kind of get a good technique because some tables are not in the best shape. So they have to be able to draw back even on a tough table. So... Um, and to me, it looks a little bit sometimes they're having all the same trainer. And they told me they're not. <laughs> it's just when you look at the technique and stuff, it, it looks very similar. So but I guess they, they grow up and they don't have the perfect uh, tables and all that, mm -hmm. but they deal with it. That makes them, I think, you know, able well, to play on everything. M more flexible yeah, more mentally. Flexible, exactly. I guess they're very thankful when they play on new tables, you know. But I think also a part of it is also that there's no instruction and there's no school of trainers. Mm -hmm. So whereas in snooker or in pool, you, you know, it's, it's very methodical. Mm -hmm. So they learn to focus more on feel, I think. Mm -hmm. Which is funny again, because in, in China, for example, they've been, they're very big on, on, they get support from in schools. They actually you know, go to school and then they have uh, billiard sessions where they practice for hours and hours and hours. I remember talking to Ko Pinyi mm -hmm. about it in Taipei, for example. They've been doing this. And in China, they have an academy now with Chinese eight ball snooker and pool together. So they are very methodical. They have trainers. They need to have them. And, mm -hmm. you know, they're always part of a national team. Or so it's that's very impressive what they do. And when you look at the results over the past couple of years, especially in the women's division, it shows that it works. Oh. Yeah, method works. And Caudron is at work, although it doesn't look like breaking a sweat here. <laughs> Cruise control. Five. Seven. Interesting play here. Most players, you know, I, I thought he would take the other route to track straight towards the corner. Eight. Boom. Six. It's 
it's not easy in this event it's a demonstration event and you know you like to perform well but i guess you before the match you don't feel the same jitters as you would for a regular tournament so you s you still need to fire yourself up yeah i mean once yeah. again it's of course the same for everybody but it's you're absolutely oh, right it's not this it's not quite the same tension yeah and for example in women's division we play race to four which is very short for mm -hmm. nine ball um so you know you got to get it going right right away um it is different definitely but um then again we've been you know we've known that for a while so you need to prepare for that not yeah. take it you know too easy or uh, be too tense here we'll all have to find our preparation and way to deal with that five rails Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> beauty. and swing it what a beauty Oh hey. man, and and that's it's very impressive, Godron. Yeah, you absolutely. You know, he's, sit, he's sitting in the stands. He watched the first two rounds, taking it easy, having a chat. But right from the get-go in this match, he's he's performing. Don't know if he would call this his A game. Looks like it. Nine. Two, <laughs> four. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we check side. Oh, passes and then comes. Yeah, even hitting on the way in, it would have been good. Europe, nine. But that's what I, I love about it too sometimes, that they have like a two option shot. It's like either hit it first or take another two rails and then hit it. <laughs> I think, I think in, in general, in all Q sports, in all disciplines, a, a player looks for margin. Mm-hmm. Find the shot that gives you most margin. I'm gonna go around. Asia, zero. Of course, we have we do that in, in pool when you are going for a ball, but you know, okay, in case, because it's a tough shot you miss, you might mm -hmm. end up playing a safety or leaving the opponent a tough shot. Of course, we do that too all the time. Yeah, yeah, and in kick shots, if exactly. you're playing a kick, which, which, which route gives you the most outs, mm -hmm. the most chances to get lucky. Difficult cue ball. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, his touch, <laughs> his <laughs> touch is super. Lovely. He certainly hit a gear in this opening round. For the match. Match point. for him to miss the third ball sitting like this three cushion gallery play by Frédéric Caudron three. amazing match in fifth year the Belgian secures the first point for Team Europe that's an incredible fast uh, <laughs> round in general <laughs> when you look at the results and stuff I mean all tables are playing pretty fast but that was that was definitely impressive I never forget uh, being at the World Games in 2001 in Japan uh, Sai Giner mm -hmm. uh, did an exhibition mm -hmm. and I was watching Suke, Ralph Suke, American pool player and uh, James Watana, the Thai snooker player I was just watching their faces when Saiginer was doing his thing because at the time uh, they hadn't seen Saiginer perform live mm -hmm. on a three cushion table and their their jaws just dropped. Yeah, I met him once too. I think it was actually in Korea once, and uh, I was I was playing in a team with him a little bit. It was more of a promotion event, mm -hmm. and that was that was awesome. I and mean, we had so much fun, and he explained so many things, and then he had a special kind of trick shot exhibition on oh. the carom table, what oh he yeah. can do. I mean, it's just it was incredible. And he's a pretty cool guy too. I mean, <laughs> it's just the way he promoted himself and he talked about his sport oh yeah, and explained. He, that was he's great. He's a showman, all right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The camera's nodding as well. <laughs> We're on day one here in the Orangerie in Roissy in France and 
inaugural event of the World Team Trophy. But the tournament is kicking into gear nicely. This was originally uh, engineered as a, as a pitch to get into the 2024 uh, Olympics. But then inadvertently the Olympic Committee made their decision. So there was a bit of a let off. This will just be the start of a long term campaign. Wilson roll back to the blue and depending on his angle on the blue he'll uh, choose to go to the last red or open from mm -hmm, here or split it now there is a red the sticking out on the left that could go to the corner pocket oh I don't think you wanted to go there but still might be able to have a shot, either the one to the side or to the corner pocket. Uh, corner pocket, he decides, but Who knows not easy. No, I think in a, like a proper competition, I'm not sure Oof. he played that shot. And he thumped it. Seven. Yeah, uh, and <laughs> nice. <laughs> that was a that was a perfect shot again. Yeah, thanks to that split off of the blue, he now is a frame and match winning position. I think he's gonna stick to the blue now, because I think the. And I'm not sure he, if he can play the pink after, maybe, or the black even. Well, if he play the pink, it'll go back to its own spot, yeah. and then possibly yeah, yeah. that pink would interfere with the red. Ones, yeah, with yeah. the red. It looks like he is going for the pink now, so... Now we're trying to accommodate all Q-Sport fans. So the nine ball fans, American Pool, they see 4-4 four four on the board between Filler and Chua, and they want to see the deciding wreck. But at this table, Wilson <laughs> is playing for the win, and in this event we'll need to shift back and forth. And luckily, the director. I'm not sure has who's breaking here. Is it? Oh, Joshua's breaking. Okay. So this is uh, the deciding wreck, Hill Hill, they call it, or double hill. Of course, in this case, you have the advantage when you broke the first one. You broke break on even games. And we see almost an exact copy of Chua's break that we saw before. The problem is when you make the one ball, that of course you have no idea where the two ball lands. So it's pretty much a... Well, yeah. okay. So for the people that don't know nine ball, the one ball is always the first ball of the diamond shaped rack. Mm -hmm. And the two ball is racked randomly. Exactly. But but Everybody. would you not read where it where it's sitting in the rack? Do you have an idea I where would, it will I go? I would definitely try to do that. That's that's for sure. But of course, my first goal would be to not pot the one ball, yeah. <laughs> if it's possible. Of course, if it goes in by accident, you can't really control that. Um, but it's just very difficult to really control the two ball when it you know stands in different parts of the yeah. rack. When it's just find that very difficult to know all the possible ways. Um, so of course the first goal is always to make sure, because the one ball, since it's always in the, in this, in the first spot, it's yeah. easier to control and you know the way of the, of the one ball. Now Filler was faced with a very tough two ball and Chua can either play the two onto the six or play the carom. So I have the Q ball pocketing the six. Oh. Filler has a view on the two. I don't know if he sees enough of it. Two are hardly showing any emotion. Yeah, Asian players don't usually show any emotions. You can obviously see the two balls, so now it looks like in 
pretty open table. No problems there. Can I play a combination now? Oh. Yeah, and then oh. and then that that's the that's the difficulty in pull. You're supposed to get out, and he'll probably still get out. But the slight still slip good, of, but of position that of could the have been, ball, That yeah. could have got a lot worse now. But it's always the you know it's always the case when something looks very easy, you tend to not take too much time, and all of a sudden you maybe forget that certain things can happen. Or then take too much time and start to overthink things. That's why it's always good to stay in your routine, to stay in your time schedule, mm -hmm. um, and not make it depend on how the table looks like, or is it easy, is it difficult. But once again, he still managed to get out here. In general, filler won't be suspect to overthink things. Very much an instinctive player. for a 2-0 lead in the match, for a victory in the match. Caudron having taken the first point in a blitz. Won't happen a lot for Filler. Not finished first. <laughs> Mikaela Tep in the mix, congratulating Filler. So Siksu and Kyron Wilson having to finish the match with the event being in a round robin format. Unfortunately, we didn't see what happened there because we left when Wilson was on the table. That's going to happen. I think Kozum will uh, produce, edit and publish the all matches, but the individual matches. In general, what we have seen from Kyron Wilson has been uh, Oops. has been very good. So what's on the table? 30 points the difference. 27 on the table. Wilson would need one snooker and all the colors to win this frame. Of course, it would be good to play that right at the beginning when there are more balls on the table. So you have a better chance. That looks good. Even if he didn't get the snooker, he's he forcing Siksu to play a certain shot. The curve it yeah, I can do it. So he'll have an, another good position for the next attempt. Yeah, so in this case now he's definitely not going for making the ball. He's actually trying to play snooker here so he can well get those points back. I mean, he, he might, I'm not sure, it looks like he's going for this yeah, one he now can, though. He can prepare a better position on the green. Yeah. Stand back in the green twice across. Draw back the cue oh, ball. Oh, nice. Beauty. Oh, no. Oops. Yeah, that was, <laughs> well, in a different situation, you would be happy yeah. for that happening, not here. Because oh, that was a great chance for a snooker. Yeah, and he's lost another pawn on the table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's not going to be enough, I think. Yeah, that was unfortunate. Would have been a really great Yeah, for snooker. the green to go in. Yeah, I see Xu has had a long travel. This is a good angle for uh, Wilson to get that cue ball behind the eight. I uh, hit it uh, behind the eight. Yeah, behind sorry, the black. behind the black <laughs> ball, listen. It's going to hit it very thin on the I'm left going side. Back and forth. Between tables. Oh, that was too thick, unfortunately. Yeah. He almost made it again. I don't like it that you still make that mistake too with the eight ball and the black. Well, <laughs> it's not if I'm doing snooker comment <laughs> commentary, I won't. But now, <laughs> you know, it's this format is asking a lot yeah, of the commentator. So 
So Wilson not backing down, he wants to win this point. Could prove vital at the end of the competition, come tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, it's really tough now to play a good snooker. Don't have much room on the table where you can hide it. Ooh. Ooh, and now the with the pink and the black so close together and the position of the blue. Not in this position because this position is quite difficult to get a snooker in the remainder of the frame good possibilities for the warrior Wilson it's over yep. he's just that's one point now He's taking a timeout. Yeah, it takes the frame and takes the timeout. Yeah, that was really, I mean, the, the, the snooker that he played on the green could have been, you know, very, could have been a very good snooker if he didn't make it. I mean, he was very close to the oh, brown. Oh, when it went in, When yeah. it went in. He was yeah. very close to the brown, so would have been a good snooker. So is the timeout five minutes or is it three minutes? Uh, I wasn't informed. I think three minutes mm -hmm. is a little steep. Mm -hmm. So it must be five just as usual. Yeah, I wouldn't be like to be on the clock when going to the toilet. <laughs> yeah. I always used to have, uh, find it very difficult to play in a round robin format. You have the same? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if I can choose, I'd rather play in a double uh, knockout mm -hmm. uh, format than in a round robin format, because also when we when we played round robin, it was always short races, and I don't like that in nine ball, to be honest. I I think race to nine is great. Even race to seven sometimes is a bit short, and in yeah. round robin we always played race to seven. So, and you know, there's what some people might not understand with round robin is at the end you have, for example, out of a group you have three advancing. And then sometimes you have different groups where a player advances with two victories because of the yeah. you know, tight matches. Yeah. And in another group, somebody wins three and doesn't maybe get through because yeah. of... And I don't think that's right. <laughs> that's just my opinion on it. But um, I think it's more fair, the double knockout uh, format. It's less biased, yeah. Mm. I find it also difficult to play in round robin because I'm, I start to calculate... Yeah, exactly. I'm not playing. Well, you should play to just win your match, but but it's, all of a it's, sudden it's, it's there. People tell me, exactly. listen. Exactly. All of a sudden, it's in if your you head lose, that if you lose seven four, you're qualified. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What kind of what kind of pep talk is that? Exactly. Or it's like winning seven six is almost no win because it's yeah. <laughs> only got seven scores and that wouldn't be enough. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of it either. Wilson at the table. It's a difficult route back for the cue ball, so he can attack the red or dump it to the short rail. Wow. Good cue ball. This was always the main objective, to get that cue ball back to balk. Yeah, that was the two option shot that we talked before, making sure you get back with the cue ball. Just yeah. in case you miss. But still, it, that only works if you miss it by a little bit. Mm -hmm. Ooh. That was... Not good. That was not good, no. That was... He wanted to pass the whole red pack and just end up on the other side of the table. Now he's giving... Wilson, an open shot. Off of the pink, he can get to the right side of the table for one of the two reds above the black. Would be best to have a slight angle on the red above the black. Then he can kiss to the, the cue ball on the red to the right of the black. The 
angles there. That would open up the black to both pockets. Bozilova refereed Kyron Wilson this season in the German Masters final. She was also refereeing the Moscone Cup in London. You watch Moscone Cup, right? Yeah, or of not? course. Yeah, of yeah, course. Okay. Yeah. How did you like the arena and the chanting and the two and a half thousand fans singing? It was yeah, it, it, it sounds incredible. I've, unfortunately, I've never been there. I've never mm -hmm. watched it live. I, was never, I wanted to go last year and then all of a sudden I had a tournament, so I couldn't go. But that's still on my bucket list. <coughs> yeah, it's hard to imagine the noise out there. <laughs> most obvious red after the next one is the one left top side of the cue ball. And you can play shape for that red, just for that red, or go into the bunch and trying to give himself a guaranteed position on the red. But I think he'll go to the left side. Big strokes, maybe with speed. I think he has enough angle so he can split the walls now just a little bit. He's going to the blue. Interesting. I thought he was going to definitely try and split it a little bit now. Yeah, but, but then I guess it's, it's difficult to judge how to get glance mm -hmm. off the red to get to the black. So he's going on this top red ball now. On the left. He's going to go down for the black again yeah and he needs uh, he would like to have a nice angle to develop red he's going blue yeah he's going blue to again. blue again mm -hmm. yeah i think he wanted a different angle on that red ball i'm not sure if that was maybe a bit too straight we'll get 43 on the board Go forward, get close to the long rail. There is a window. I don't know if he has traveled far enough. Oh, he's shaking his head. I yeah, don't think he's nod. very happy. Don't think it's there. If he sees part of that red ball, he could use it to play safe. Oh, he went for it. Extremely difficult. <laughs> Do you, by the way, uh, we spoke a bit. Do you, by the way, stick to your n pool technique if you play snooker? Or does it invite you to adapt a little bit? It's I do stick to it. Not I wouldn't say 100%. I think my, my stroke gets maybe a, a little shorter. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not pausing in the back, but I'm definitely having a slower Transition, stroke back. Yeah. So because you have to be more precise. And I think, and since I know that, I adapt it a little bit. But I'm not standing uh, like a snooker player. I'm not changing that. So. And you play with a pool cue. I think. I've actually done both, to be yeah. honest. I've tried it with a snooker cue, but then again, I know I, I have to play with it more often I ha to have to get yes, used but to that. Uh, but, but I promise you, if you allow yourself to get used to a snooker cue, mm -hmm. it's going to get easier. Mm -hmm. That's what you're they've been telling You're not going to be able to play power shots, but you're going to be much, much more consistent. Mm -hmm. Balls will go in easier. And I like the sound of a snooker cue, it's like, duck. <laughs> yeah, that, that t uh, people have been telling me this too, yeah, about 
changing to a snooker view, but then again, I'm not playing that often, so um, just more for, for practice purposes. He has a nice mountain to climb, see Xu. <laughs> I wanted to say that the position is there, I mean, the reds are developed. He has more difficulty than Wilson in this match to control his cue ball. That's definitely a big chance now for Wilson. One. I went a little bit too long here should be okay. He's playing to the corner. Yep. Yeah. Well, Cubo is now in the center of the table. That would be a huge problem for me, <laughs> for my buddy. Oh, with <laughs> I'm not so sure if I could reach that now. Oh, no, but they have this thing they call the rest. Okay. Uh, which yeah, will help you to get to I the ball. I know, but it's just, it would be already difficult to make that shot without it. And then to oh, yeah. actually use that <laughs> on the snooker table would be very difficult for me. Just don't like the rest. You know, because in pool, you're now used to the extensions. Oh, yeah. You don't play much with the rest yeah. anymore. So, I would like to avoid that as much as possible. Seven on the table, plenty for Sikh Su. But it needs to start and click for the young Chinese player. The red above the pink allows Wilson to get to the short drill, stay low or go all the way up. if Sikhsu can get to the red on the left, still a difficult red in the bulk area. One. So when uh, when is Team Europe playing again? Tonight? We're playing uh, at uh, 5.30 p.m. against uh, Asia. Asia, okay, that's a nice match. You're playing Ga Young Kim. Yes, I'm playing Ga Young. Uh, Do you have any idea how you how you two stand? Oh, uh, no idea. To be honest, Just to be honest, I, I would have to check. Okay, then it's probably everything not, I say now crazy. Could, could be a lie. <laughs> so could, yeah, well, <laughs> let's start at zero zero again. <laughs> no, it's just. Uh, but we're, um, I mean, we're playing all the same tournaments, so we know each other very well, and uh, so we're. I don't want to say best friends of the mm -hmm. pool table, but we get along and we're friends. And but of course, as soon as we are on the pool table, the fight is on. So if listen, you're playing a race to four, so you can hardly say anything about it. But if you were to play a race to forty, what would your advantage over her be and her advantage over you? Uh, well, I would say Ga Young is definitely like a, a rhythm player. If she mm. gets into gear, it, she's hard to stop. So I would say then my advantage would be the safety game and the kicking. I've been working a lot on the safety game actually with my brother because he's very good at that. He's one of the best. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I have, you know, the big luck that he is with me at the in the academy. So definitely been working a lot on that. Because when it comes to, I mean, I can run out just as much as her, but it's, she's really a tough rhythm player. Mm -hmm. And when she gets into gear and stuff, it's like Joshua. Yeah, you know, aggressive. You, yeah. I mean, you need to find a way to stop that flow then. Yeah. So. And would you then also uh, opt for more de like tactical plays? Like when you're playing push out, are you then... Uh, playing her or in pl general? Playing push outs for safeties? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, when you play players like that where, I mean, everything can happen, but really, you know, the top ones where you know they can just run out and just uh, never let you to the table, you have to think of the 
tactical mm -hmm. moves and, and strategy. I mean, I'm more of a run out person myself. I'm not like the biggest safety expert. Um, but I know there is so much more to the game, and I've learned so much when I'm just watching the men's game, yeah. the Elwin. And there's still so much uh, more possibilities in the women's game when it comes to safety oh, and yeah, kicking and stuff like that. Yeah. I think we're not we're not close to the to the top men at defensive all when it comes wise. to the defensive yeah, oh, definitely, game. Definitely, definitely. So I, I see agree. a lot of potential there. Yeah, sometimes it won't feel like practicing if mm -hmm. you practice on that because mm -hmm. it's not it's not a grind. But you need to get squeeze the information in. But uh, that's one of the thing. One of the things when you look at good players, I mean, in the top, almost everybody can run out, you know. But when it comes to defense, that's where you can see the difference. The difference, yes, definitely. And if you can switch back and forth between the offensive game and defense game, I mean, that's, I guess, the big that's skills the, that, then. Yeah, that's the next trick. Squeeze someone for ten minutes and then come with the shot. Exactly. It's looking pretty good here for Wilson. Yeah, it's done and dust is this match match and uh, yep. we just had many, many points. Chua. I think Filler Chua was the closest match in this encounter. And you know, Chua had a shot on four four, but it wasn't easy. It was that combination? All right, that's Hands there. Yeah, French 4 goes to Wilson. He wins his match, as did Caudron, 30-12. Blitzing his opponent from Vietnam and uh, Filler 1-5-4 against Chua. So 3-0 for Team Europe. Thanks, Jasmine well, Ocean, thank uh, multi-world champion. You have a CV from here until Kärnten in Austria. <laughs> and uh, good luck in the tournament. Thank and you. Maybe I'll see you back in the booth. Yeah, thank you so much, and thank you for listening, guys. <laughs>